Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at 15 advanced um, interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, Python for DevOps. Now, whether you are preparing for a DevOps interview and want to showcase your advanced Python skills, then you are in the right place. So let's get started with this. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question we have is what are Python decorators and how can they be used in a DevOps environment? So decorators can be used when you want to modify the behavior of another function or another uh, method. So Python decorators are also functions, but then we can use them to uh, basically modify the functions, uh, behavior of other functions without modifying the code itself. All right. Now we can use this to add functionality to your existing code base without modifying that code base itself. And in, in terms of your DevOps environment, decorators can be used for logging functionality, timing, access control, uh, caching and other cross cutting concerns. OK, for example, a decorator can be used when you want to log the execution time of a function to help the, uh, monitor the overall performance itself. OK, so that's where we can make use of your decorators. The next question we have is how can you use Python to automate the deployment process? So um, we can use Python to automate your deployment process. So for this, we have libraries that can be used. So we have libraries like uh, Fabric, Paramico or uh, Boto3, which can be used for the AWS platform. For example, uh, we can write a Fabric script. Now this script will pull the latest code from your central repository, then build a Docker image from that code and then push that image to your central registry. And then we deploy it to your Kubernetes cluster. So we can create a script for this and we can automate this by making use of your Fabric script in Python. The next question we have is explain the use of context managers in Python and how they can benefit DevOps tasks. So context managers in Python um, are generally defined using the with statement and we can use them to handle your setup and uh, tear down logic. And this will ensure that the resources are managed properly. For example, if you're working with files and if you want to handle the closing of the files automatically, we can make use of the with statement. So we can use them in the DevOps tasks to manage resources. Like I said, your uh, file handles, uh, database connections or any network connections. And this will ensure that they are correctly open and closed. So the main advantage of using the with statement is uh, it automatically closes the uh, connection or your files. The next question we have is what is the sub process module in Python? And how can it be used for system administration tasks? So the sub process module can be used whenever you want to run any new process. Like if you want to run any uh, Linux commands using a Python script, we can make use of your sub process for this. So this will um, uh, spin up new processes, connect to their input or output or uh, error pipes and also return or obtain the return code of that particular command. Now this can be used for any system admin tasks like running your shell commands or running any automated scripts or managing other system processes. For those things, we can make use of your sub process module. The next question we have is how can you ensure thread safety in a Python script used for concurrent tasks in a DevOps pipeline? So to ensure that we have a thread safety in your Python script, we can make use of your threading module along with your synchronization primitives like using log, R log, semaphore or event. So that way we can ensure that uh, the thread safety is followed in your Python scripts. For example, we can use a lock to prevent race conditions when multiple threads are trying to modify a shared data. That way, you know, if a thread is working with a data, a lock is applied so that other threads uh, will not be able to work with that data. The next question we have is to describe how to use Python's multiprocessing module to 
parallelized tasks in a DevOps context. So the multi-processing module, it simply helps us to create uh, processes which are running concurrently on separate CPU cores. All right. Now, in a DevOps context, we can use them to uh, parallelize tasks, tasks such as uh, running log analysis or running uh, multiple test suits or handling multiple deployment pipelines simultaneously. So whenever you want to do multiple things, we can make use of your multiple processing for that. So it could be running multiple tests, it could be running multiple deployments or simply a log analysis. The next question we have is what is Ansible and how can Python be integrated with it? So Ansible is your open source configuration management automation tool. We can use this to manage the configurations of your remote machines. In addition to that, we can also use it to manage the deployment of our applications and also automation of any tasks like installing packages or managing the services. For all those things, we can make use of your Ansible. Now, Python can be integrated with Ansible. For this, we can make use of custom modules, plugins, and dynamic inventory scripts. So Ansible itself is written in Python, and it simply um, uh, Python simply extends the Ansible's functionality. All right, so we can easily integrate it by making use of uh, modules and plugins. The next question we have is how can you use Python to interact with REST APIs? in a DevOps pipeline. So for this, we can make use of uh, libraries. So we have libraries like requests or HTTP.client libraries, which can be used to interact with uh, REST APIs. For example, uh, if you want to make a, uh, if you want to make use of the requests library to make a HTTP request to a CI CD pipeline, to trigger builds or to fetch job status or to deploy applications, we can make use of these libraries, which basically does the API calls um, uh, to your CI CD pipeline and get the information from the pipeline. The next question we have is explain how to handle secrets management in Python applications. So, uh, Whenever you're working with any scripting, you will definitely end up using secrets. So managing these secrets efficiently is very important. So in terms of your Python scripts, we can make use of your environment variables. We can make use of secret management tools. So we have tools like HashiCorp Vault. We have AWS Secrets Manager. We have Azure Key Vault, where we can store our secrets and then we can refer those secrets in our uh, script. Now these tools, they provide us with secure storage of these secrets and also access control for this sensitive information. Uh, and then we can integrate these uh, secrets with our Python applications using the respective libraries. So if you're storing the secrets in AWS, we can use the Secrets Manager library. If you're storing them in Azure Key Vault, we can use that library and then so on. The next question we have is what are Python virtual environments and why are they important in a DevOps workflow? So virtual environments in Python, they mainly allow us to create isolated environments which has their own uh, dependencies. All right. Now, these will ensure that uh, for different, different projects, we have different, different dependencies and these dependencies, they don't conflict with each other. Now, in a DevOps workflow, using these virtual environments can help us maintain consistency across the development environment, the testing environment, and prod environment. So we can have virtual environments for your dev, for your testing, and your pro for your production. And you can have your dependencies in these virtual environments. That way, we are maintaining consistency across these environments. The next question we have is how can you use Python to monitor system performance? So um, again, for this, we make use of your libraries. So Python provides us with system performance uh, libraries like uh, uh, PSUtil, which can be used to monitor your CPU, memory, disk, and network usage. Alternatively, we can also use third party tools, like we can use Prometheus client to export the metrics from the server to Prometheus 
for monitoring and alerting mechanism. So Prometheus can act as our data source, which will get the data from the servers and then export them uh, to a visualization tool like Grafana. And then we can start monitoring them from there and understand how the system is performing. The next question we have is describe how can you use Python for log aggregation and analysis. So Python can be used for aggregating your logs and then analyzing those logs. Again, it provides us with different different libraries. So we have LogGuru for logging. We have Pandas for uh, data analysis. And then we have Elasticsearch hyphen Py for interacting with um, Elasticsearch, right? So we can write Python scripts, which will parse the logs, filter the relevant information, and then visualize the data for us, right? So you have different, different libraries based on your use case. You can use these libraries, uh, which will help you to um, uh, fetch your logs, analyze your logs, and gen then generate reports using these logs. The next question we have is how can you use Python to automate cloud infrastructure management? So for this, again, we can write Python scripts, which can help us to automate the infrastructure management on cloud. So we have SDKs like Boto3. If you're on AWS, we can use Boto3. If you're on Google, you can use uh, Google Code Cloud Path. Python. If you're on Azure, you can use Azure SDK for Python. So you have SDKs uh, based on the cloud platform you're using. You can use the respective SDKs, which will help you to create the infrastructure. Now, these libraries, they simply allow us to write the code, the scripting for provisioning, scaling, and then managing these resources on the cloud programmatically. So you can write the program, the code, and you can start managing the resources from the Python itself. The next question we have is explain how to use Python for creating and managing Docker containers. So again, for this, Python provides us with a library that we can use to create and manage your Docker containers. The library would be docker-py. So using this library, we can manage your Docker containers by using Python script. So you can write your scripts, which will help you to build your Docker images. Um, run containers, manage this uh, life cycle of your containers and also interact with Docker uh, daemon. So you can build the image, push it to a registry, start a container, uh, do whatever you want by using this library in terms of your Docker containers. The next question we have is how can Python be used to ensure compliance and security in our DevOps pipeline? So. Python can ensure that uh, you know you're following compliance and security by writing your Python scripts, which enforces policies, um, scan for any vulnerabilities, and also monitor any uh, security events. So you know we'll have to make sure that we're writing the uh, uh, Python script accordingly. Uh, so we have tools for this available. So we have tools like uh, Bandit which can be used to find any um, uh, security issues that we, we might be having with the code that we have written. And then we have libraries like um, PYJWT, which can be used to handle uh, JSON web tokens for authentication and authorization. So basically generating tokens, which will help us to authenticate to the uh, applications to maybe interact with that application. So this way we can ensure that the Python script is compliance and it is following all the security policies and we're not exposing any credentials. And that brings us to the end of our 15 advanced uh, Python for DevOps interview questions. Um, I hope you found this helpful uh, to prepare for your next DevOps interview. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get um, uh, notified whenever I upload new content. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.